Ken Sanders, Alex Caldera, welcome to Radioactive. Long time no see. So glad to see your faces and now hear your voices. All right, all right. Good to see Thanks, you. Thanks, Laura. So uh, you had mentioned maybe, I don't know if I got the name right, Ken. I've been calling it pandemical poetry. Yeah, I, yes. Yeah, I, I, I just, it, it's a name. <laughs> <laughs> if if I can indulge upon you, Alex, you might have to hold your hands over your ears. Uh, I I wrote a, a a poem this morning. You know, waking out of my pandemical nightmares. So this is probably a first. I'm going to actually uh, read you. Fortunately, it's short. A poem that I wrote this morning. Um, it's called the Great Pandemonium, a fairy tale for 2020. Chicken Little was right. After all, the sky did fall. The sea did rise. The earth went fallow. The three little pigs, Old Mother Hubbard and Little Red Riding Hood, were all evicted. Goldilocks, too. Jack Spratt and his wife and both big bad wolves all lost their jobs starved to death. Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, never woke up this time. Cinderella, she just kept dreaming. And just when we needed them the most, turns out both Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox never existed in the first place. The end. I mean, really, the end. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh my gosh, that's a, a great start. And I had everybody muted, so I'm going to unmute all, and uh, we'll we'll all respond together in three, two. Ooh, 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 ooh. Rashawn, that goes some snaps. Got to get that. Oh yeah, that see that is what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about coming out of the pandemic. That's well, I I love it. I loved it, Ken. We've gone from the pandemical to the pandemonial. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, when I, when I first read that this morning, Ken, I must tell you that I, I whipped up an antidote. To oh, the, thank God, uh, Alex. Yes, because I, I didn't like the way it ended. Where? Know, the end. Well, it was a little dark. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, well, this is well, dark. It was the end. Let it was me, the end, <laughs> Alex. Can I, can I uh, do the... I'm really talking to Morrison, the end here. Dear Mr. Burroughs, wherever you are, whatever you say, keep saying alive, reproducing wild patterns all over the place, filling up pages with words, 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 until there's no white space left to show the very words that multiply unceasingly, and it goes blank, black ink, infested square after square where there had been talking pictures and sounds and figures all gone over themselves, unrecognizable, recognizable, it they were Unrecognizably, their eyes are recognizable. I don't want any room, room, room. <laughs> the great antidote laughter ah, ah, ah. Do, do you take it with a glass of water or nah, straight down straight, straight i up. figured <laughs> yeah yeah you got something ken or you want to go back and forth or hey, laura you, you mute it unmute yourself laura you're the host Good. Know how and to then do I that. did the unmute all. Anyway, that was fantastic. And uh, uh, 
there's video to go with all of this, you guys. We're going to try and get it into the show notes. We'll pull the Zoom video because Alex, it was visual as much as Arl. So uh, we're doing pandemical poetry with Alex Caldiero, the sonosopher of Utah County, and Ken Sanders, Ken Sanders' rare books. Uh, and we're doing some call and response here with the, the poetry. So Ken, what you got to riff on? Okay, uh, well, I'm, you know, uh, I'm gonna have to, be, you know, bring in some backup, some big guns here, because uh, uh, that's, you know, probably the third poem I've written in my life. And Was that that? On, on his, <laughs> you know, 30,000th or something. So I'm gonna bring in Wendell Berry, because for me, Wendell Berry really speaks to what we're all going through right now. And remarkably, he's been doing it for more than 60 years. If we had all listened to Wendell Berry, maybe Mother Nature wouldn't be so pissed at us right now. This is from a collection called Sabbaths. It's a collection of all his Sunday poems that he's written there on the banks of the Kentucky River for lo these many decades. Little stream, camp branch, flowing through the ever-renewing woods on the steep slopes. By what name did the Shawnee call you? We live briefly in time, longer than we will live to know. When we who know you by name are gone, what will they call you? When our nation has fallen as all things fall, when the Constitution is only another paper God prayed to and lied to by only another autocrat, what will they call you? When our kind is gone, as all things go, and you remain, your tumbles catching and returning light to the air as beautifully as before. Will only the angels name you and praise you then? Ken, okay, I, I have been saying that Alex is the one that scared the crap out of me with the howl reading that we did that first time years ago, but I think that poem, it just summed up what we're going through right now as folks are freaking out about the state of our country and the adherence to the rule of law, common sense, and public health. So thank you for giving me new nightmares through poetry. <laughs> You're welcome. Alex, you got an antidote for that, or are you going to double down? You know, this distancing is plunging me into a world of metaphors. Uh-oh. And I hate metaphors <laughs> because I like to see things as they are right in front of my face, but nothing seems to be what it is in front of my face. And so I see everything as metaphors. Perhaps it is only wanting to never have it end that makes me cherish a distant wind with a breath sound so deep it rises and waves and language and landscape makes changes too beautiful to matter except for whoever comes to claim what makes alterations of our august commands. Of, of, if, of and if, the two ultimate words in my vocabulary, of, about belonging, about being part of something, and if, if, a possibility that is not assured. All right. I think this is the perfect spot to make good on my promise to play your Leonard Cohen song here. Oh yeah, that's it right so, there. What is it about you want it darker that works here, Ken? Uh, well, it's, it's a dark time. You know, it's, it's, it's those hated metaphors, Laura. 
Well, then let's do it. Leonard Cohen and 90.9 KRCL. Welcome back to Radioactive on 90.9 KRCL. I'm Laura Jones, and on the Zoom session, we've got Rashawn Leak, and it's a special pandemical poetry edition of the show with Ken Sanders and Alex Caldiero. Ken, I wanted to ask you briefly about the pandemic and your shop, Ken Sanders Rare Books, because I noted that last weekend you sent out an email along with Weller Books in the King's English saying, why are we reopening? Can you kind of sum up your feelings for us there? Well, I, yeah, it's, it's very simple. I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid for my own health. I'm afraid for my employees' health, and I'm afraid, afraid for our customers' health. It's, it's one thing to say you're open, but it's the doing of the thing. How are you supposed to accomplish it and keep, keep people safe when we have not flattened the curve yet. We have not flattened the death and the illness rate. We're only pretending that we have because we don't know yet. I need to see another couple of weeks of data. If those continue to go down and flatten, uh, and, and just because we're lucky enough to be in a state that overall has relatively few deaths, and relatively few injuries, but 60 fellow Utahns dead, or whatever the number really is, that's not okay with me. And I want it to be safe. I, I mean, the restaurants, so many other industries, bars have been, you know, devastated and lost all of their income. So, you know, we're operating on about half income. So I'm very, very grateful for that. But I want to do the smart thing here because we could be living the, with this for a couple, three years until there is enough time to get vaccines and to get cures. And I don't want any of my customers, my employees, or myself to get it. Uh, I'm not invincible as much as I might like to think I am. And we want it to be safe. And how do you do it? Do you let someone come in your store? Okay, we have enough room to socially distance six people. So then we have to say, okay, get, get the heck out. Your time's up. Somebody else gets to come in. Who, who decides how much time? Oh, well, only you rich people that want to buy an expensive book can come in, and you poor people are just going to browse and read them and buy a cheap paperback can't? Holy crap, that's not what my bookstore is about. So no. Well, and then I'm guessing the cost of PPE, personal protective equipment for your staff, let alone your customers, and isn't it a burden on your bottom line? We, we, we're already purchasing masks and gloves. I mean, not, you know, big, giant, fancy ones, as cheap as possible. And both the staff and the public will have to wear them when they come in. Trust me, I want to do that. But if we don't set the role model, mm. it, well, and it's we, to keep everyone safe. It's not to protect me from you or vice versa. The idea is we're all cooperating here to keep everyone safe. I think right. it's an I, interesting conundrum for folks, Rajan, because on one hand, you want to do the right thing, and then folks are, no, I want my haircut. I want my yeah, it, oh, It's yeah. wild. And I think I think Sim hit on it earlier. You know, we, yes. we are purposefully, you know, just ignoring science. You know, and Ken just hit on it. You know, the numbers are still, you know, they haven't even plateaued. They're still just going up. We're still seeing deaths. We're still seeing cases. And uh, my wife and I were just talking about that earlier with bookstores. You know, I mean, you know, I when I go into a bookstore, you know, especially a bookstore like yours, Ken, it's not, I don't have a title in mind. I want right. to, I want to walk around. I want to see what, you know, walk to sections, feel the books, let them speak to me before I, I make a purchase. And how do you put it, you know, how do you put a time limit on something like that? And, you know, to your point, like, what does that look like? And then I want to touch on one other thing that I don't think people are really doing. And I know I'm myself guilty. Like are every time you go out in public and you have your mask on, are you cleaning it? Are you using a different mask? Because if you're not, so now you're just you're just elongating the process. If you're not cleaning every time you go out, it, you know, and you touch something, if you're not cleaning your hands and you put your mask back on, you know, if you if you got uh, if you come in contact with it, you're going to get it. Be just because we are not trained to to go through this, we're not trained to to clean our mask every day. And that's if you even you, most people don't even have disposable masks anyway. 
So most of us are using the same cloth mask. So you're not washing it every day because who is doing laundry like that? I mean, let's, you know, we're just not being honest with ourselves and we're just being comfortable. We're getting to a point where we have, we have sort of learned how to live with it. And now we are feeling comfortable to go out and live our day. And that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous world. You know, Sim Gill has been hanging out, Salt Lake County District Attorney, and he's got his finger up. So unmute yourself. And there we go. And you know, I just wanted to touch upon, I think what Ken's doing and what we're doing with the written word and what Rashawn was talking about, that's the difference between simply existing and living. When you go into a bookstore, you are living an experience uh, and uh, you are interacting and you open the book, you look at the table of contacts, you read a poetry and then you buy the book. It's a very living interactive experience. And what we're really talking about right now in this sterile sort of existence that of reopening is mere existence. And that is not the way I want to live my life. I, I want to live the life. I just don't want to exist in it. Mm -hmm. And I think, and, and I think the, the, the exchange of existence for economic gain is a loss on the living of life of what it means to be alive and being in your community. And I think that's what Ken is talking about. And I think that's what the most powerful part that we're missing. And when we transact that away, we lose our humanity in that process. And I don't think that's what people are fully appreciating. So sorry let me, for letting me make that point. No, you're hanging well, out. You're your spot on. It's, a great, it's a great point. And Sim, don't forget, you can't smell the yeah. book on a Zoom. Yes. That's right, you can't smell hey, yeah, yeah, you can't. Pandemical yes, poetry really, and uh, Alex Caldero's got a I hand I bring this uh, poem in because I think it's uh, probably the ultimate poem of our age. It's by Ezra Pound, <clears throat> until 45. And it's based on bringing together the idea of usury and how, and by the way, he defines it as a charge for the use of purchasing power levied without regard to production, often without regard to the possibility of production, hence the failure of the Medici, Medici banks. Uh, he brings in politics and consumerism and the value of life. You were talking about before, Sim, about how we, this just merely living and being a product and becoming a product, no more than anything we sell. This poem is, is, is crucial. Despite there are some references, but these are references to art. And it, it says art as a salvation and, and uh, et cetera. Let me get to it. With usura. And he, he transforms usury into a poetic usura. Usura. With usura hath no man a house of good stone. Each block cut smooth and well fitting that design may cover their face. With usura hath no man a painted paradise on his church wall, harp is set loose, or where virgin receiveth message, and hull and halo projects from incision. With usura seeth no man Gonzaga, his heirs and his concubines, no pictures made to endure, nor to live with, but it is made to sell and sell quickly. With usura, sin against nature. Is thy bread evermore of stale rags? Is thy bread dry as paper? With no mountain wheat, no strong flour. With usura, the line grows thick. With usura is no clear demarcation. And no man can find sight for his dwelling. Stone cutter is kept from his stone, weaver is kept from his loom. With usura, wood comes not to wool comes not to market. Sheep bringeth no gain. With usura, usura is a moraine. Usura blunteth the needle in the maid's hand and stoppeth the spinner's cunning. Pietro Lombardo came not by usura, Duccio came not by usura, no Pier de la Francesca, Juan Bellin not by usura, nor was La Colonia painted, came not by usura, Angelico came not Ambrogio Prides, 
che no church of cut stone signed Adamo me fecit, not by usura Saint Trophim, not by usura Saint Elea, these are cathedrals, usura rusted the chisel, it rusted the craft and the craftsman, it gnaweth the thread in the loom, none learneth to weave gold in her pattern, Asia has a canker by usura, Cremoisi is unembroidered, emerald findeth no memling, usura slayeth the child in the womb, it stayeth the young man's courting, it had brought palsy to bed, lieth between the young bride and her bridegroom, contra naturam, they have brought whores for Aloysius, a sacred site. Corpses are set to banquet at behest of usura. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, in the, in, Sim Gill, in, in the face of that poem and Mitt Romney's Patriots Pay proposal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, first of all, thank you so much because here's the line that just speaks to me about it. Thy bread of dry rags. This is what this is all about. This transactional, uh, minimal, uh, immediate gratification. When you're opening your mouth to, uh, to taste it, what you're going to be really receiving is thy bread of dry rags. Uh, and it's so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, again, it, it talks about uh, art. Everything is demeaned. Mm -hmm. yep. Every human yes. yep. thing, nourishment, everything is demeaned. Ken Sanders. Ezra, pound for pound. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pretty heavy. More <laughs> Wendell Berry. Let us not condemn the human beings, self-appointed to serve machines, poor humans, so weak of mind, so self-misled, so willing to risk heroic wrong. What's the satisfaction in condemning the self-condemned? Let them be answered by themselves, who grow smaller, their great works uglier, more lethal, day by day, as we wish ourselves to be spared the fate, fatal numbering. Let us not confound offenders with offenses. May they come to mercy and to peace. But damn their bank accounts inflated by the spent breath of all the earth of species forever changed to money. Let their legal, let their legal falsehoods, corpses incorporated that cannot see or feel, think or care, that eat the world and shit money fry in hell in their own fat. May their incarnate steel and fire that destroy the mountains forever be damned. May the chemicals be damned that poison the rivers and damned too the alien slop and fume that spoil the air, the water, and all the living world, sold, soiled, or burned. May the plastic trash that defiles lands and oceans the machines that destroy the work of human hands, the mind-destroying mechanical dreams be damned, completely damned, be damned also to the incorporations of industrial war that is the triumph of every machine that will destroy any life, and every life, any place, and every place for victory that always is defeat. May the heartless speech of machines that break the heart of the smallest wholeness, and may the radiant waste that has made geniuses, idiots, forever be damned. It's a poor religion that can't provide a sufficient curse when needed, but if you condemn the dire shortcuts and devices of the engineers, Confess that you condemn yourself. You too belong to that litter, and so must enter your guilty plea, and so must come to your work. You must go ahead in opposition to the mechanical life, continuing 
also the creaturely task longer than your life of correcting yourself. One, All right. All right. the short one, but it's a good count to mm -hmm. end, as Alex said at the beginning. Blessed be the video who leaving leaves not even a track. Yeah, yeah. Wendell Berry. Ooh, pandemical poetry with Ken Sanders and now the sonosopher, Alex Caldiero. This is uh, from a book uh, called Poetry is Wanted Here. <laughs> I it, forgot uh, you guys put that jab book out. Published by yours truly, Ken Sanders, Dream Garden Press. Love One it. of the best books I've ever done, Ken. I want to formally and publicly thank you. I don't think I have. Well, you're welcome, Alex. Is this available uh, at the shop for curbside? Of course. Absolutely. Yes, or, or you can just put, if you put a quarter by Alex's ear, it'll pop out. <laughs> and and the, the one, the thing that set this whole collection going is uh, the title itself, Poetry is Wanted Here, is from uh, the October... 9-11. Uh, 9-11 attack and the idea of, of fear, which is what we really, what all this pandemic thing at the bottom of it ultimately comes down to. It's a form of terrorism. And this is to my good friend, Bob Heenan, back in Brooklyn, who's terrorized right now in his apartment and doesn't dare go out. He changes all his clothes. I, I cannot tell you what he does. It's, it's become like a major ritual to the point where he hasn't been out of his house for like three weeks. And before that, another two weeks. And before that, another three weeks. You don't sound so good. Please take care. Most of this is mental. That's why it's terrorism. Meant to disconcert, make you revert to blind fear. Poetry is wanted here. And to boot. Our homegrown nuts are starting to take root. Yet in most parts, things are calm and generally subdued. But there have been hoaxes and folkses getting anxious and ready to conclude that it's hopeless and drear. Poetry is wanted here. So I'm going to poetize to realize that you cannot hide when worlds collide. No going inside. No taking a breather either. It all comes in on you at once, and you gotta have at least an ounce of hope and joy to deploy into the atmosphere of fear to implode the load of grief that's drawing near. Poetry is wanted here, cause all peoples are just like you are, and I are close or far, are just people with nowhere to run. Let's stick a flower into every gun, like way back when. Or was that a dream? Can't say now, feeling so low, seeing so bleak, thinking so drear. Songs are wanted here. Rhyming and timing, a rebirth of cheer. Poetry is wanted here. Bam, we are human after all. America, venerable yet vulnerable and human after all. That's our true strength and the real meaning of this happenstance that we can fall and scroll and rise and be surprised and not take for granted the morning sun so beautiful and dear poetry is wanted here. Forgive me for ranting, for panting, for chanting out of tune. That's the fool in me seeking a tune in me wanting to slay, stay the light and free for what would oppress, depress, regress, obsess, and in general, make a mess of my soul. I wanna be whole, in control, on a roll, without the slightest hint of fear. Poetry is wanted here. So, my dear friend, hang in, hang on, hang tight. We gotta see this to the end. We gotta be concerned and discern the real enemy that we fight for the veil between truth and lie 
is become so thin and sheer, poetry is wanted here. Woo! Damn! Here, here. Here, here. I got you. Oh. That was awesome. That was so good. That was awesome. And I, I just want to say to you, I've been making my entire staff wait to finish the <laughs> listening to this. And you, have, you, you both have inspired me. I told them, wait, I'm coming to the meeting. I need to finish the, listening to this poem over here. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And with that, I say goodbye and adieu. Thank you so much. Take care, Thank you, Sim Gill. Like, woo, homegrown was, nuts taking root what oh that was awesome that feels like a natural stopping point but ken you got some more we always got more laura happy to do some bonus ones what you got all right <clears throat> wendell berry doesn't uh, title his poems by the way he just puts numbers on them but it seems kind of useless to to say the number so i don't if we've become a people incapable of thought, then the brute thought of mere power and mere greed will think for us. If we have become incapable of denying ourselves anything, then all that we have will be taken from us. If we have no compassion, we will suffer alone. We will suffer alone the destruction of ourselves these are merely the laws of this world as known to Shakespeare, as known to Milton. When we cease from human thought, a low and effective cunning stirs in the most inhuman minds. Wendell Berry. That kind of sums up that, I think that, conflict that we are feeling you know of trying to keep to our common sense and and help the community but at the same time i want to get out it's it's mm -hmm. that that's inner struggle that's going on ken well that well the, the, these both mm -hmm. Alex and i are doing here today despite our having not consulted on it at all is exactly what you just expressed it took a lot of you know there's hundreds and hundreds of poems in here and there's thousands of poems in Alex's head but these are the ones we chose very deliberately very specifically for the pandemical poems pandemical mm -hmm. poems mm -hmm. pandemical Sanders. poems Alex Caldiero Rashawn you still okay yeah I'm still good I, I can't how do I how do I leave this meeting these guys are <laughs> just firing You're killing it Alex what you got oh what do I got? You got one of your own? You got by the way, if, uh, if, if any of you guys are around to pass by, get a chance to pass by the Utah Museum of Contemporary Art. Uh, they got an installation of mine, and in, in, in they broke down the poetry into banners. And basically, it is only words divide us, only words unite us. So take a look and drive down and, and uh, the Utah Museum, Umoka. Yeah, so I'll put that in the show notes for folks to check out um, down there on West Temple. And what is it, about 20th? Yeah. Alex, what part of Brooklyn are you from? Uh, well, it's neither here nor there. It was on, on the end of Ocean Avenue there and uh, like on, on the very, very up, opposite of Red Hook. Okay. You know, it's an indiscriminate kind of place. By way of Sicily. I was like, oh, what part of Brooklyn is that? Yeah, I am uh, I got family all throughout Brooklyn. Uh, I used to live in Crown Heights. Ah, all right. There's a lot of Jewish neighborhoods. There. Oh, yeah. Well, I hear that accent. I feel like I'm talking to family. All right, all right. <laughs> the real thing looks fake, and the fake thing looks fake. Nor can it be otherwise, as long as eyes look as if by looks alone they are fulfilled. Blood, for instance, is easy to fake. Real blood looks fake, and fake blood looks real. That is, it looks fake. Flowers, 
for instance, are easy to fake, but it's difficult to make fake flowers look real. Human beings, for instance, act no different whether they are real or fake. All these subtleties are lost on the likes of us. I haven't heard that one before. That's I, in poetry is wanted here? I don't remember that one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good book. That's a really good book. Yeah, that, you, that, you, you need know, that book around the house. I don't even know why this freaking book hasn't been on, on the bestseller list now for 20 years. I, I, I can speak to that. You signed with a, Alex, you've signed with a publisher that exists in name only. No marketing <laughs> staff, there's no our man. staff, there's no sales force. There's yeah, no I thought that was ideal. <laughs> Very grassroots. Oh, yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like it. All right, you're going to have to probably print up some more of those, Ken, because I need a copy. I don't think I Oh, have. yeah, I, I'd we, like we, a copy. We got, we got plenty. All right. <laughs> 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 All right. Alex, we can make it a twofer with Ken Brewer's whale song. His last oh, wow. of, of poetry. That would be great. Her Dream Garden Press title. All right, Ken, you got something for us? Okay. All right, Laura, I got a meeting to go to, but yeah. man. All right, no so, worries. Just to right. see Rashawn. Hey, Rashawn, thanks so much for Bye, being Rashawn. on. Hey, take oh, it of easy. course. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, gentlemen. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Ciao. All right, it's just us fishes. Um. starting to lose track here so let's do um what do you guys want to do one or two more each okay that'd be good one each more <clears throat> it's it's hard to have hope it's harder as you grow old for hope must not depend on feeling good and there is the dream of loneliness at absolute midnight you also you also have withdrawn belief in the present reality of the future, which surely will surprise us. And hope is harder when it cannot come by prediction any more than by wishing. But stop dithering. The young ask the old to hope. What will you tell them? Tell them at least what you say to yourself. Because we have not made our lives to fit our places, the forests are ruined, the fields eroded, the streams polluted, the mountains overturned. Hope then to belong to your place by your own knowledge of what it is that no other place is, and by your caring for it as you care for no other place. This place that you belong to, though it is not yours, or it was from the beginning and will be to the end. Belong to your place by knowledge of the others who are your neighbors in it. The old man, sick and poor, who comes like a heron, the fish in the creek. And the fish in the creek, and the heron who man like fishes for the fish in the creek, and the birds who sing in the trees in the silence of the fisherman, and the heron, and the trees that keep the land they stand upon, as we too must keep it. God. This knowledge cannot be taken from you by power or by wealth. It will stop your ears to the powerful when they ask for your faith, and to the wealthy when they ask for your land and your work. Answer with knowledge of the others who are here and of how to be here with them. By this knowledge, make the sense you need to make. By it, stand in the dignity of good sense, whatever may follow. Speak to your fellow humans as your place has taught you to speak as it has spoken to you. Speak its dialect 
as your old compatriots spoke it before they had heard a radio. Speak publicly what cannot be taught or learned in the public. Listen privately, silently to the voices that rise up from the pages of books and from your own heart. Be still and listen to the voices that belong to the stream banks and the trees and the open fields. These are songs and sayings that belong to this place by which it speaks for itself and no other. Found your hope then on the ground under your feet, your hope of heaven, let it rest on the ground underfoot. Be lighted by the light that falls freely upon it after the darkness of the nights and the darkness of our ignorance and madness. Let it be lighted also by the light that is within you, which is the light of imagination. By it you see the likeness of people in other places to yourself in your place. It lights invariably the need to care toward other people, other creatures in other places, as you would ask them for care toward your place and you. No place at last is better than the world. The world is no better than its places. Its places at last are no better than their people, while their people continue in them. When the people make dark the light within, within them, the world darkens. Wendell Berry. All right, all right. Alex Caldiero is going to finish us off here with some pandemical poetry. All right. Just wrote this the other night. By the way, I've been dreaming a lot about dead people. My, my ancestors, my my. My cousin just died in, in Syracuse and in Sicily. And uh, I don't know, they keep coming. That could be a bad thing, a good thing, I don't know. Uh, this, this poem I read a couple of days ago and it has to do with uh, the accepting the inevitable. And there are no redos. What falls off that cannot come back on, not even if reborn, not even if redreamed, a thing done, gone, as no other can be, each itself event, past all reckoning, past mechanical, redo that thing, no can do that thing, ever again or ever, this is what just did do that done. Original poetry from Alex Caldiero, the Sinosopher. And you've got your exhibit down at Umoka, and folks- Well, yeah, on the outside, and, and, and it's in preparation for a, uh, a retrospect of 50 years work coming up in January of 21. Hopefully by then, mass gatherings will be- No, no I'm almost uh, looking yeah. forward to having a virtual show. <laughs> I'm even planning on that. It might even be better. <laughs> Ken Sanders, what's the website where people can catch up with you and request poetry as wanted here or anything from Wendell Berry, Ezra Pound? Who else did we feature today? Alex Caldiero. Well, besides Alex Caldiero. Um, KenSandersBooks.com is the website. 801-521-3819 is the phone number. Uh, we're happy. We're still doing, you know, curbside pickups. We, again, as I said earlier, we're not ready to open back up yet, but you can come into the entrance of the store and we'll get a book for you. You can order it online. Uh, we're very grateful to all of our customers that are supporting us that way. And uh, my friend Kate McLeod, who's doing her own Sunday night um, uh, live uh, uh, folk song show, on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, she has been helping me on Thursday nights to produce my own kitty show where I read children's literature and um, uh, have invited guests. And I have a running joke with the different cookie jar. Every time when I take a break on my kitty show, I go to have a cookie jar, but I never so far ever 
get a cookie. And I'm, I'm just being completely and utterly corny and stupid with it. And as you, Laura, as you would well know from doing these sort of things, and I, I can at least see you and get your reaction, but when you're doing these, 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 podcasts or what, I don't even know what they're called. You're just sitting there staring at yourself on a computer and there's absolutely no feedback, no reaction. I pretend I can hear and see my audience and I give, when I know my grandkids are watching, I give them shout out, stuff like that. And it's corny as heck, but I'm having a ball with it. That's every Thursday night, six Six to 7 p.m online through your Facebook and YouTube. So we'll put yep. links to that as well. It is so good to see you and get the band back together for Poetry is Wanted All here. Right. Thank, you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. Thanks Alex. so much, guys. You're good. You're Thanks, out. Alex. See you later. Bye-bye. Adios. Bye-bye.